please stand for the reading of God's word? I'll be reading Ephesians three fourteen through 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven on, and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious re- riches that he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know, though this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is being, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Piper. Good job. I'm falling apart here, guys. Sorry. Let me find the pieces so the batteries don't fall out during the middle of the, of the PowerPoint. Maybe. All right. Well, today is the last day for this passage. Bummers. Well, maybe. <laughs> At least it's the last official sermon going through this prayer. Um, I know that I've been impacted by its words and by the power that it gives us. Well, today, I'm going to focus on one word. You've probably figured it out by now, haven't you? It's been the focus of our worship today, and and just to make sure, I even included it in the title of my sermon. What's that word? It's not huzzah. (laughs) Oh, we'll never live that one down. The word is love, of course, love. Love for this reason, the, the for this reason that begins the whole prayer, the several rabbit trails, Paul's excitement, the mystery, all begin and end right here with God's love. Some have said that this is the fundamental character quality of God. It was our monthly character quality last month. Do you remember it? Do you remember? How many remember? I have figured some of you might forget, so let's say it together. Love versus selfishness. Giving to others basic needs without having as my motive personal reward. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. 1 Corinthians 13.3. I've stated often, I, I think, probably that I believe that holiness is God's fundamental character. Um... I don't know if you agree with that, but I don't quibble with those who say that God's fundamental character quality is love. Um, Because, did you realize, holiness has often been described as perfect love. And I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that at all. So I would say, though, that God's holiness and God's love are so intricately intertwined that the only separation would be that love is mostly experienced as a verb rather than a noun. What that means is love is almost always proven through action. Would you agree? Right? I see anyone can tell you that they love you. And they can even mean it. And, I, and you can even believe that they mean it. But until they show it, there's always that doubt, isn't there? Love is most often proven as a verb through action. So this whole prayer is predicated on God's love for us with the hope that we will get point number three. So if you're watching along, we get to point number three. That's the whole purpose of this. So number one today, are you in love? Verse 17b says this, rooted and established in love. We hear it all the time, though, I am in love. Do we know what it means to be in love? I mean, I think that we do. If, if that's true, and I'm not saying that it isn't true, it's not a real thing, but, but we could just as easily say, if we say, I'm in love, we could just as easily say, I'm in hate. I know, we don't like it, but... but or whatever emotion you choose to put in there, okay? I, I, right? I'm in happiness. I'm in hungry. 
it's getting close to lunchtime, so that is hungry a verb? Anyway. Stay with me. When someone is in love and then something happens and it fails or whatever that happens, and isn't it amazing how quickly it moves to I'm hurt, to I'm angry, and often to I hate? Right? Now, now no Christ follower would ever act this way, would they? Ouch. Well, what does it mean to really be rooted and established in love? We talked about it a few weeks ago, and I didn't emphasize the love part as much as I emphasized the together part, that we may have power together with all the saints. I, I would suggest to you today that love and together go together. Well, that's kind of a weird sentence. Love and together go together, right? At least love is understood better when we do it together. Now, now, you realize I'm talking more about uh, the, more than just the emotion of love, right? The feeling of love, even the verb of love. We're talking about the noun. Do you know what I mean when I say noun? Do you guys realize how crazy nouns are? You didn't know you were going to get an English lesson. Listen, I, very brief. A noun is a word that refers to a thing, like a Bible, a person, God, an animal, a lion, a place, heaven, a quality, holiness, an idea, justice, or an action, giving. All of those are nouns. It's no wonder the English language is so messy for other people, right? But it helps me to think about love as a noun in the context of together and then what it means to be rooted and established or grounded in it. God and love most clearly understood when we put them together. See, grounded is a noun that shows itself more clearly as a verb. I'm really being confusing, I'm sorry. In action, in other words. It, it's not just that I'm in love, an emotional response, but I am in, capital I-N, with quotation marks, love. Living, breathing, residing in, finding my hope, my foundation, my strength, my life grounded in love. Not just any old love, though, right? His love. His love. Does that make sense? We are rooted and grounded in love. Number two, how, how big, let's get on past, how big is the love? Verse 18b, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. So, so how big is God's love? Yeah. Do we realize that this word, love, is way bigger and more involved than almost any other word in our lives? I mean, what would happen if we would really grasp what the two nouns, God and love, together mean for us? I think that we would know just how big it is. But it would be hard for a lot of people. Let me see. I think we know what it means to be in God's love but it would be hard for a lot of people to see it based on how we live it. Uh, I mean, if God's love is really that big and powerful and transformational, and we say that this is the driving force of our lives as Christ followers, we do say that, right? His love is that. Why isn't it having a greater impact on our families, our church, our friends, our community? Uh, do you get it? I mean, we can give all kinds of illustrations. We can wear crosses, and, and we can have thoughtful bumper stickers, or we can post all the poignant platitudes on Facebook or whatever social media platform you use. We can sing about it, and we can testify about it, and we can feel, feel satisfied in our expression of it. We can, we can even excuse our foibles and occasional slips of the tongue as stressful moments or whatever we want to call them and say, it's okay because we love each other. We can rationalize and justify and excuse, but it still comes to the bottom line. Do we grasp how big God's love is? I've been praying a lot this week as I've been working on this to understand or at least catch a glimpse of how big God's love is. I mean, I stop and I think about it and I read about it in His Word and I hear about it in worship songs, proclaiming it loudly and boldly, and I really do believe that it's big. I do. But then I ask myself, if it really is that big, why are we not living in it better? Well, I am, Pastor. 
Just look at me. I'm a living example of God's love. Really? No, I, I mean, I believe you. I believe me. I mean, I, I, I say that too. Don't, don't. I'm living in God's love. But if I'm honest, I'm not. I, at least not like I could be or should be. The question, I guess, is why not? I mean, we can believe that his love is huge, wide and long and high and deep, and, and we've experienced it so many ways, but I, I think until we get to point number three, and, and, and here it is, until we get here, we don't really get here. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, it can be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. See, how, how often do we behave this way? Oh God, the storms are terrible. The giants are huge. We can't possibly do it. Right? It's what the children of Israel did. God says, go take the promised land. Oh, God, don't make us go in the promised land. There are giants there. I, I mean, it's wonderful. We can see it's incredible. We know you want us to go there, and you told us to go there, but don't make us go. How often do we spend time telling God how big our giants are when we should be telling our giants how big our God is? Tell the storm that your God is big. You understand? So I ask, do you know this love? And to know this love that surpasses knowledge and under, or understanding. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, knowing that we know that we know, and so that you and, and we may be filled to the measure with, with perfect love, His love, Holy Spirit, filling every crack and crevice, every nook and cranny from top to bottom, spilling out on everyone who even dares to get near us. Do you know His love this way? Do you? If others were to judge the quality and veracity of God's love based on how you show it, don't look at anyone else, just look at yourself, sometimes sheepishly if I look at myself. You see, people, most people don't just meet Jesus out of the clear blue. I mean, I mean we have those, those crazy stories about, so I was walking in the wilderness, and all of a sudden a lightning bolt came down, and, and I experienced God. That happens, right? I, I know it happens. But most of the time, how do people get introduced to Jesus? Through someone telling them about Jesus. Right? The whole idea of introducing someone, introducing Jesus to someone tells you the story. Do you go around introducing complete strangers? Hi, what's your name? I want to introduce you to this other guy who I don't know complete strangers. Hey, I want to introduce you to my best friend. Right? We introduce. Most people find Jesus. The vast majority of people who ever come to church or people who ever come to know Christ as their personal Savior do it because someone introduced him to them or them to him. You know, I'm, I know you're going through some struggles. I know you're going through some battles. I, I know life is tough. I, I, I know that there are some difficult things going on. You know what? I don't have all the answers, but I know a guy. Maybe you just like to talk to him. Let me introduce you. Right? But the fact of the matter is, you can't really show what you don't have. And you can't introduce someone that you don't know. I mean, not really, and it have any valid impact. I mean, if you really know him, then it will show. It will. I mean, I mean there's no other way around it. I mean, I mean, this relationship with God is so big 
that you, if you really know him, people will know that you know him. Right? I, I, guys, we, it's ridiculous for us to get worried about our society today and what media tries to tell us. We have freedom. And even if it was against the law to speak the name of Jesus, if Jesus is living on the inside, people are going to know something's going on. Right? I mean, I mean, if he really is. There's no way that you can really know Jesus and it not show. Therefore, if it ain't showing, then you ain't knowing. That was a horrible rhyme, but you might have to be a t-shirt. If, you ain't, if it ain't showing, then you, then you ain't knowing. Now, now listen, I'm not saying that you will instantly start wearing Christian logo t-shirts or bumper stickers, or 27 crosses, or Christian symbols, from necklaces to pins, or earrings, or even tattoos. But, but I've never found a person who truly knows that they know that they know that I didn't recognize. The Bible says that your spirit will bear witness with their spirit. You will know that you have a brother or sister in Christ. You may not know how you know, but you know that's Holy Spirit working in you and in them, and you kind of go, Cool. I know I've told this story before, and, it, and it's, it's, it's semi-humorous, but also very sad. I had a guy come to me when I was at one of my churches. He said, you know, you'll never guess what happened, Pastor. Uh, I, I, I found a guy at, at, at work, and he's a Christian too. I said, how long have you known him? He said, three years. Did he just become a Christian? <laughs> no, he's been a Christian. I said, that's ridiculous. How could you actually work with someone for that long and not know they're a Christ follower? How, how, how is that possible? You hit it pretty well, didn't you? Guys, we don't live in a third world country. We don't have to hide it. We don't have to worship in secret. We don't have to go in the catacombs under the church. You didn't know we have catacombs, did you? If you step out of line, we'll introduce you to them. You know, we have some tunnels. You don't have to hide in the tunnels. As I said earlier, this is the point, the focus, the purpose of this prayer. This is the point for, of, for this reason. This is the starting place of the immeasurably more, knowing his love. But, but hear me, that's not the conclusion, just to know his love. It, it's the final part of the verse, that the, the result of knowing. It is the purpose for knowing, to be filled to the measure with all the love of God. All the fullness of God. If God's primary character quality is love, then that's what I want to be filled with, right? To be filled to the measure with all the fullness of God. In other words, entirely filled. No place left out. No hidden closets or undedicated spaces. All of it, all of me filled with his love. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Are you hungry for it? Let me tell you this morning. God is ready to fill you to the measure. That, that's his plan. That's his desire. That's his heart for you. Because he knows, remember the, <laughs> the night and day movie I talked about? With me? Without me. With God? Without him. Actually, it's a lot lower than this, but I don't want to bend over. With me? Without me. That's his desire for you. Would you bow your heads with me for a minute? Just listen to this prayer. This is the new EB version. I kneel before you, Father, out of reverence and love, and I join together with your family, my family in heaven and on earth, in praising you. I thank you for allowing me to use your name. Thank you for loving and adopting me into your family. I promise to represent you well, not to take the responsibility of your name for granted. Help me look at, treat, respect, give the benefit of the doubt to, to love each one as my brother and sister. Thank you for your strength and your power, and I allow it to work in me and through me, the real me, the inner me, into my heart, the place you dwell in. 
I allow Christ to dwell in me. I receive it. I accept it. I breathe it in and out. I, I can't make it three minutes without you. I choose to walk in faith, especially when my sight is limited and when I don't understand, I trust you. Father, I realize that solo Christianity doesn't get it. I am designed to be connected to others, the others that you call saints. I choose to be in your love. I let it flow through me to them and to my world. Together, we are amazed at how big your love is, how undeserved, how sacrificial, how transformational. Forgive us when we forget and don't take advantage of your love for us, your love for each other. Most of all, Father, help me to know that I know that I know your love. See, it's one thing to know about it and even believe it. It's quite another to truly let it in. So today, Father, on purpose, I let it in so that you can fill me and the overflow will splash on those who bump into me. I still don't know how to really live in it, but I'm willing to try if you will help me. I, I want to live in the immeasurably more that you say is available. I, I believe in it. I want it. I desperately need it. Help, help me think big thoughts, dream bigger dreams, and remember, you want us. You tell us to ask. So I ask today. I step out in faith. I won't settle for mediocre. Help me to catch a glimpse of, of what it looks like so I know what to run toward. I give you glory, me, a tiny part of your church, alive and intentionally active in my relationship with Jesus. I give you me. And Father, I pray for us today as your people. You have incredible things in store for us. Your word tells us immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine for us. So today, Father, I, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just wash over this place, that you would touch our hearts and minds, that you would draw us to you, that, that you would help us to realize how incredible uh, this relationship is and how much more you want for us. My prayer for us is that we would live in your love. We'd realize how huge your love is. And most importantly, we would know your love. In fact, know it to the point where it fills us to the measure with all the fullness of everything that you have to offer us. Father, as we leave in a few moments, I pray that we wouldn't escape from your presence, that, Holy Spirit, you would go with us, that you would work in us and through us, that, that you would draw us closer and closer to you and make us more and more like Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing, what you're going to do. We give you praise today. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please stand. Greet those around you and uh, give a huzzah to the yellow team if you happen to see them, the gold team. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>